All right, guys, let's take a look at our language arts for today. So hopefully your packet um, is in the right order because I know one of them I had messed up and I think it's the one that I have. So if you don't see the pages in order, just um, check to see if it's on the next day because it got a little bit mixed up. I know for one and I believe that's the one that I kept. And then this one I have, it's all deconstructed and it's the... The copies that I had put in um, to to make the packets for this one they came out weird and that's why they they don't have anything on the back for a lot of the pages because it it didn't end up printing that way and so um, it, the, the printer just it takes a lot of work to use that printer and you have to make sure that there's if there's something on the back of one it has to be on the back of of all of them and I ended up having a problem and having had had to print them this way so hopefully yours are perfect and it's just mine that's messed up but if not you can see in the video exactly what we're doing so we're going to start with vocabulary and our directions for this a whale of a problem story is to read the passage below and answer the vocabulary questions that follow you'll notice that you have these kinds of questions this is an activity that you do on your star test so it's where we're looking at the word in context meaning in a sentence or in a story. And what we're doing is if we're not sure of what the word in bold means, we're looking at the sentence before and the sentence after to try to figure it out. So before we get started, um, let's just take a look at what all the words are. So our question is, what does captivity mean? What does the word puzzled mean? What is the meaning of assist? What does shallow mean? What does plentiful mean? So we have five words that we're going to be looking at. We're going to try to just use the context to figure out what the answer is. All right, make sure you try to read this on your own before you listen to me. Um, so pause the video if you need to and try to read it. But if you've already read it, here we go. Wanda sighed as she looked around her new home. Where am I? She thought. Wanda, a three-year-old whale calf, was in captivity. The rest of her family was free in the ocean. She was puzzled because she didn't remember anything. She was confused about how she got here. Then she heard the door open. A beautiful lady walked in and she held a bucket. The bucket was filled with fish. The lady's name was Jennifer and a shorter boy walked next to her. He would assist her in feeding Wanda. Wanda felt hungry for fish, but it was hard for her to swim fast because she was hurt. She looked at her fin and saw the marks. This must be the problem. She felt weak and needed to get stronger. Her fin would heal with food, rest, and exercise. She would do these things so she could be released back to the wild. Wanda swam to a shallow end of the pool. She saw Jennifer and her helper with buckets full of fish. The fish were plentiful. There was a lot for her to eat. She was happy that she did not have to hunt for her fish because she was too weak for that. Wanda was sure she would feel better when she ate all those fish. Once she filled her stomach, she would figure out how to get back to her family in the wild. All right, so let's start with number one. What does captivity mean? Does it mean living in a zoo, living in a pool, swimming free in the ocean, or being kept in one place not free? So whichever one you think it might be, just put a little line next to it, but don't circle it yet. And let's take a look at the context. It says, Wanda, a three-year-old whale calf, was in captivity. The rest of her family was free in the ocean. So if her family is free and she's in captivity, meaning she's not free, what do you think would be the best answer here? Probably D, right? being kept in one place and not free. If you're kept in a zoo or a pool, that definitely also means the same thing, but it's too specific, right? Because being in captivity, you don't have to be in a zoo or you don't have to be in a pool, but you have to be not free, right? So that's why D would be the best answer. And then C was one that we could just cross out right away because we know that she isn't um, like her family. She's somewhere else, not with her family. So if her family's free, we know that wouldn't be the right answer. How about number two for puzzled? Do you think it means interested, confused, excited, or lost? Let's take a look at our context here. She was puzzled because she didn't remember anything. She was confused about how she got there. 
So what do you think? Is she interested in something? Definitely not. How about confused? We have that word in there. So let, this is the one that I'd put a little mark next to. That was just an accident. <laughs> is she excited? No, she's not excited. Is she lost? Well, she's kind of lost, right? She doesn't know where she is. But in this case, we're saying she's puzzled because she doesn't remember and she's confused about how she got there. So for puzzled, even though lost maybe seems like it might be a good answer, the best answer would be confused. How about for number three? See if you can do numbers three, four, and five on your own. Okay, see if you can try to figure it out using the steps that we used here. We're looking for the meaning of assist. So does it mean A, to help, B, to watch, C, to teach, or D, to interfere? How would I start to figure this out? I'm going to go back here. I'm going to read. Hmm, let's read the sentence before. The lady's name was Jennifer and a shorter boy walked next to her. He would assist her in feeding Wanda. So he, the boy is assisting Jennifer in feeding Wanda. Does that mean, is he helping her? Is he watching her? Is he teaching her? Or is he interfering with her? How about number four? What does shallow mean? Does it mean warm water, cold water, not very deep water, or water for swimming? You're going to go up here to shallow. Wanda swam to a shallow end of the pool. Hmm. This doesn't give you a lot of context. It says right before she would do these things so she could be released back to the wild. Wanda would swim to a shallow end of the pool. She saw Jennifer and her helper with buckets of fish. So it doesn't give you a lot of context for shallow. So just try your best to figure it out. You might think about if you ever go to Paul Nelson pool or if you ever go swimming, which end is the shallow end? Can you have part of the pool just be warm water or cold water? I don't think so, unless there's two separate pools, right? So I'd cross those out. So what do you think shallow would mean for this one? And the last one, plentiful. Does it mean new, fresh, ready to eat, or a large amount of something? If it says the fish were plentiful, there was a lot for her to eat, what would be the best choice? All right, so hopefully you finish this or you're pausing the video, and the next... Um, Worksheet in your packet is practicing the long and short OO sound in a crossword puzzle. So double O has two sounds. It can sound like the word tool, where we have the OO and tool. And it can also sound like U, uh, like in the word good. So here's your word bank of all the words that are going to have these two different sounds. Long sound is OO, short sound is U, uh, right? And then Across means you're going to put the word in going this way. Down means the word's going to go this way, right? So for number two, and lucky you guys, um, you don't have any numbers that are the same. Sometimes you'll have um, in crossword puzzles a number two across and a number two down, but you don't, so you'll be all right. So starting with uh, number two across, how you are feeling. So I'd go up here. I know it needs to be a word that has four letters. How you are feeling, is it took, look, woof, brook, smooth, roof, mood, cook, boot, crook? If it means how you are feeling, that would be your mood. And is the oo sound in mood long or short? Remember, oo is long, uh is short, mood. Long sound, perfect. So I'd cross out mood, cross out number two across. Next one, the top of a house or building. Hmm, so you'd go back through and read the words. Took, look, woof, brook, smooth, roof, cook, boot, crook. You need four letters. And if you said the word was roof is the top of a house or building, you are absolutely correct. So I can cross out number four, cross out the word roof. Is this a long or short sound for oo? Oo says oo for long, o for short, roof. Long, perfect. Let's do one more and let's do a down one. The sound a dog makes. Do you even need to look at the word bank? 
hopefully you picked it was woof, right? And so we know we're correct because when we fill in the letters, this is exactly how we spell the word woof, right? What would happen if I started to fill in the letters and maybe let's say there was an E here? What would that tell me about the two words that I put down? It would tell you that one of them was incorrect. So you would want to look back at both of them and see, check your answer. Okay, so if that happens, if say for number three, I start to write something in and this R isn't supposed to be in the downward, then I would need to check my answer. So see if you can figure out the rest. Number six across says a thief or robber. Number eight, past tense of take. Number nine, to see something. We already did number one down, so number three down, a creek or stream. Number five, without bumps or tears. Number six, to make food to eat. Number seven, something you wear on your foot. And the remaining words are took, look, brook, smooth, cook, boot, and crook. Really quickly before we move on, let's take a look at this at number five. Without bumps or tears. Oh no, not number five, sorry. Number three, a creek or stream. Do you see a homophone? in number three. Creek, right? A creek here, this means like a river, like a stream, right? And then creek, if I spelt it C-R-E-A-K, would mean the sound that you make when you step on a loose floorboard, right? And we had this homophone in our spelling packet. All right, so pause the video if you need to. We're gonna move on to the next worksheet here. We're looking at comparative and superlative adjectives. And we actually did a few um, exercises on these before. So this should be um, some review for you guys. So remember, a comparative adjective is used for comparing two people or things. A superlative adjective is used for comparing one person or thing with a group of other people or things. So it's comparative between two. Superlative is one person or thing compared to the whole world or the whole class or another group of people or things. So all you're gonna do for these is, here's our, um, it tells us using an example. So we have an adjective, small, when we make it a comparative, we usually add ER, so we have smaller. And then when we have the superlative, we're gonna add EST, smallest. And we've actually studied a couple of spelling changes that happen as well. So um, for example, with friendlier, we had friendly, friendlier, friendliest. Does anyone remember what happened? How did we change the spelling of friendly to make it friendlier and friendliest? Change the Y to an I, then add ER. Change the Y to an I, then add EST. So lucky for you guys, you don't have to do that. You just have to circle the correct adjective. So let's take a look um, at the first one. Oscar is a very something dog. He's a very friendly dog. He's a very friendlier dog. He's a very friendliest dog. First instinct, what would you pick? Just put a little dot next to what you think it is. Okay, now let's see if you still have the same answer after we think of our rules. So are we comparing the dog to one other thing? Are we comparing two people or two animals? No, so I'm not gonna use the comparative adjective. Remember, you have adjective, the middle one is your comparative, and the last one is your superlative. So we're not gonna use friendlier. We can't use friendlier. We're not comparing the dog to another dog or person or thing. How about, are we comparing the dog to another group of things? Oscar is a very friendliest dog. No, there's no other group, right? We're just talking about the dog. So we can't use friendliest since we're not comparing him to a group of other things. So the only choice is that he's friendly. We're just describing the dog. We're not comparing him. So try to think about that as you're doing the rest of these. Are you comparing to one other person or thing? Are you comparing to a group? If not, it's gonna be the first one, just a regular adjective. Let's take a look at number two. It is something today than it was yesterday. 
It is cold today than it was yesterday. It is colder today than it was yesterday. It is coldest today than it was yesterday. Let's try the first one. Am I comparing two people or things? I am. Which two things are they? Today and yesterday, I'm comparing the temperature. So since I'm comparing two things, that means I'm not just describing the temperature and it means I'm not comparing one thing to a whole group of other things. So my answer has to be colder. It is colder today than it was yesterday. Usually when we do these grammar exercises, um, if English was your first language, you'll just kind of know what the answer is. It'll sound correct. Um, but if English wasn't your first language, Sometimes maybe it sounds correct and sometimes maybe it doesn't. It really just depends. So that's why it's good for us to know these rules. That way, sometimes when we um, get confused about things, maybe you'll, I don't know if it's ever happened to you, but you might write a word and then go, is that really how it's spelled? <laughs> because a lot of times we do things automatically and we don't stop to think about what we're doing. We just have memorized how to spell words and things, right? So if that were to happen to you, if you'd say the sentence, it is coldest today than it was yesterday, and you go, wait a minute, huh? You would know how to find your answer. So that's why we study a little bit of grammar. Let's do one more of these together. The librarian asked us to be quiet, quieter, quietest. Are we comparing two people or things? Nope, so we can't say quieter. Are we comparing one person or thing to a group of things? If I say the librarian asked us to be quietest. Nope. And hopefully it sounded kind of weird, both of these. The librarian asked us to be quiet. Are we just describing what the librarian asked us to be? Totally. And that's why that one's going to work there. So see if you can figure out the rest of the answers. And then I'm going to also show you really quickly what you're going to do for the bottom part. And we've looked at some of these in class before too. So some comparative and superlative adjectives are irregular, which means they don't follow the same rules as the rest of, of the uh, words did. Where, you know, we added ER to make it comparative. We added EST to make it superlative. So these are going to be the same. The first one is going to be your adjective. The second one is going to be your comparative adjective. And the last one is going to be your superlative adjective. So look at our example here. We have bad. Usually we add ER to make it comparative, but we don't. We have a whole different word, which is worse. And then for the superlative, we have a whole different word, which is worst with a, an ST at the end. So it's kind of similar to EST, except we're missing the E. So you're just going to do this the same exact way. Even though the words are different, um, they're all in the correct order. So if you think, am I comparing two things? You'll know that it's going to be comparative. Am I comparing one thing to a group? You'll know that it's going to be superlative. Am I just describing something? You know that it's just a regular adjective. So let's take a look at number 11. Ted wanted many vegetables on his plate, Ted wanted more vegetables on his plate. Ted wanted most vegetables on his plate. Are there any of these that you can think of just crossing off immediately? Most, it sounds weird. And are we comparing the number of vegetables on his plate to a large group? No. How about more? Am I comparing his, the amount of vegetables that he wants to something? No, but technically you could say that this is correct. And that would mean um, that you're thinking that he had a certain amount of vegetables on his plate already and that now he wants more than that. So you're thinking about maybe the, uh, the amount that he has and you're comparing that with the amount that he wanted or that he had and that he wanted. Sorry, it's past tense. So technically you could put this one on there even though there isn't anything that it's com being compared to. But the best one to pick here would be many, right? Because he's just describing how many vegetables that he wanted on his plate. So we could put many. However, if you put more, that's fine too. So I'm going to just circle both of them. All right, let's take a look at number 12. That movie was the something I've seen in a long time. Was it the bad I've seen in a long time? The worst I've seen in a long time? Or the worst I've seen in a long time? Are we just describing the movie? 
no, we are kind of comparing the movie. Are we comparing the movie to one other movie? No, we're not. How about, are we comparing the movie to all the movies that we've seen in a long time? Yeah, so it's kind of like, um, even though it doesn't say um, that movie was the worst I've seen compared to other movies in a long time. You can tell by the sentence that that's what they're saying. It's the worst movie I've seen in a long time, meaning uh, um, compared to all the other movies I've seen. So for some of these, kind of just like the first one, you can read a little bit more into it. They, they aren't as easy as the ones that we did up at the top for the superlatives. I wish grandma didn't live so far away, further away, furthest away. What do you think? Are we um, just describing where grandma lives? That she just lives far away and we wish she didn't live so far away? Yeah, we could have that as our answer, but let's check the rest. So I'll just put a little dot here. I wish grandma didn't live so further away. Are we comparing where grandma lives to somebody, to where somebody else lives? No, we're not comparing two places. Are we comparing where grandma lives to a group of other people's houses where they live? Not at all. So we're going to pick far. We just wish she didn't live so far away. All right. See if you can do the rest of these on your own. I'll see if I can add some links in the, um, in the post, in the description for practice with comparative and superlative adjectives in case you guys would like more practice with this. But it should be a review. We have done it in class. And ours was actually harder because we had to write out the whole word. We didn't have the words here, so we had to make sure we got the spelling correct. All right, let's take a look. For writing today, we're just gonna be using some sentence starters. And you can take a look at the picture here to kind of get an idea of what you're gonna write. So the sentence starters, you have the beginning of the sentence, all you have to do is fill in the rest. So John took a deep breath before he, what do you think he's about to do? Doesn't really give us any clues in the picture, so you can really make up anything that you want. Um, we've read a lot of stories about people in competitions. We read the game show stories, right? Maybe he's gonna go on a game show. Or we've read about different sports competition that students have been in. Maybe he's taking a deep breath before he kicks the soccer ball, right? So whatever you wanna write about, write that here. Now, we wanna say how he was feeling. Let's say he's playing a, a championship soccer game. So he was feeling nervous because he really wanted to win or he was feeling excited because it was the last game and his team was doing so well. John's mom always said, what do you think? What kind of advice might she be giving him for whatever um, you're saying he's doing, right? Maybe John's mom always said, take a deep breath when you feel nervous, <laughs> right? And it'll calm you down every time. Maybe John's mom said something else, some other advice. Don't be nervous, just try your best, something like that. And then at the end of the day, John, what happened? Did John, um, he took a deep breath before he kicked the final championship soccer goal. And at the end of the day, he got the goal and his team won, right? You're just using your own mind to come up with things. If you're having trouble thinking of something on your own, think of something that happened to you. Think of something that was in another story we read. Think of something that you watched on TV. Um, the only thing is you have to use this character's name is John and you have to finish um, the sentence says here. So you don't have to rewrite this. You're just going to write the rest. John took a deep breath before he kicked the soccer ball towards the goal, right? So you don't have um, a certain amount of sentences you're supposed to write. You just have to complete each sentence. That's all. Make sure you check your spelling. Make sure you have a period at the end. Obviously, the capital is already there for you since they wrote the first part of the sentence for you already. So remember, you're writing about whatever you want to write about. You're completing the sentence using correct spelling and punctuation. Think about commas too. Remember, we, we've been practicing using commas. So notice here we have at the end of the day, comma. Why do we use a comma here anyways? This is kind of like an introduction to the sentence that tells us 
um, what time of day it is. So that's why we have the comma for this one. But think about, do you need any commas in your sentence? Because that would be something to look at too. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we have prayer and preparation. So we have a short reading we're going to do. Then on the back, you have a coloring. And then after that, we have another little um, writing exercise here. So hopefully this is in order for you. Um, if it's not, the, the main thing is you're going to do all the pages in the packet. So um, if you do them in the wrong order, that's okay. Um, you can, uh, if you want to do whatever order you have, that's fine. Or if you are waiting for the next video, that's fine too. But don't worry if you're a little bit confused, just know that we're going to do all of it. So doesn't matter the order. It really is up to you. You're alone doing remote learning. So you could technically, you know, if you wanted to do more work, you could do more work. I wouldn't recommend doing less work because you could get behind and that would not be good if you had just a ton of work to do. And, you know, it's the end of the school year and you're trying to then do, you know, four weeks worth of work. That wouldn't be good. But if you wanted to do extra work one day, maybe you wanted just to do an extra page of math because you were so confident about it. Um, do that. That's fine. It's really up to you since you guys are at home. So I'm going to go ahead and read this for you guys. Prayer and preparation. I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Genesis 42 2. In the book of Genesis, a faithful man named Jacob was preparing his family and workers for a famine or shortage of food. First, Jacob prayed to God for protection. Then he sent his sons on a long, difficult journey to Egypt to get food and supplies. After we turn to God in prayer to ask for protection and grace, our next step is to take action. Have you ever prayed before a test in school? That's a wonderful thing to do. Through prayer, God can grant us a sense of peace and readiness. You need to study for that test too. When we face challenges, God is counting on us to do our part. So today, while we are coloring in this scene from the story, let's remember to be like Jacob and his sons. First, we should take time to pray for God's peace and guidance. Then it's time to get to work. This is perfect. And we've talked about this before. You know, you you want to pray. You want to ask for God's help. But you have to do your part. You can't just think, okay, I'm going to pray and then do nothing. God will just do it all for me. That's not really fair, is it? For you to pass a test just because you said, hey, God, do me this favor. Do me a solid, right? No, no, no. You have to do your part too. So make sure we pray, we ask God for help, and then we do our best to make sure that we are making it happen, right? Let's take a look at the commas here that we have. So first of all, in the book of Genesis, comma, we have an introductory phrase where we're talking about where we found something, right? Next, we have comma or, why are we using this comma by or? Because or is a certain kind of word. It's a conjunction, right? So comma before conjunction. How about first and then? We have a comma after both of those. Why? These are the introductory phrases. It's kind of telling us about the time that things are happening, the order that things are happening, right? Um, another thing that we're, we're going to learn here, and I've mentioned it to a couple of you guys before in your writing, is that when we have something like the word before or after, we're going to have a comma after that first clause. So after we turn to God in prayer to ask for protection and grace, comma, our next step is to take action. I could also say before I go to school, comma, I always eat cereal or something. So when you're using before and after, and then you have like a little um, clause afterwards, you have, uh, you're saying something after the words before and after, basically, you'll put a comma there. And then for the next part, uh, you just finish your sentence. So it's kind of where you take your pause. After I wake up in the morning, notice you'll pause, that's where your comma goes. I take a shower. Before I brush my teeth, I do a little pause. That's where the comma goes. I eat breakfast. So don't forget about that one too. 
All right, I think those are all the commas. One more is when we use when. It's kind of the same thing as when we use before or after. When I blah, 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 you'll have your pause and that's where your comma goes. And then um, you'll finish the rest of your sentence. So after, before, and when are all gonna kind of act the same as far as commas go. When I get up in the morning, comma, I always feel great, right? When we face challenges, do a little pause. That's where your comma goes. God is counting on us to do our part. All right. So you can go ahead and do your coloring. Um, if you, I'm pretty sure that, I'm not sure if this printed on the back like mine did. Um, if it did, it doesn't matter. You can use crayons, you can use colored pencils, whatever you want to use is fine. And then I have this last page here. Again, if this page, I didn't have a lot of extra copies of packets. I had the one that I messed up and then I had all my pages. So if this page is on another day, it's totally fine for you to leave it for that day. Um, but if you don't see it in your packet, just look to see if it's there on another day. Okay, just like the ants, in Proverbs, in Proverbs 6, 6 8, God tells us to take a lesson from the ants. Yes, the ants, about being prepared. Learn from their ways and become wise. They labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. Can you think of something you need to prepare for? You can write down your ideas here. So maybe there's a situation, things that you have to help you prepare for the situation and things to do. So maybe you need to prepare for um, playing a game with somebody. What are the things that you have that can help you? And then what can you do to, um, what can you do to help you win the game, right? Maybe you have to clean your room. Let's, I'm going to write that one. Situation. I'll say, um, I need to clean my room. And you can use this sentence frame and just change this part here. So I need to clean my room. I need to um, get really good at basketball. I need to beat my friend in Roblox or whatever. I, I don't know what games you guys play. <laughs> I know you guys play Roblox, but I don't know if it's a competition. Yikes. All right. Um, or maybe it's, if anybody plays um, Animal Crossing, I need to build the best island. Okay. I know about that game. I need to catch all the best Pokemon right? I need to find a shiny Pokemon. So things, um, things to have. So in order to clean my room, mm, I can actually just use my hands. I don't really have to do much else unless I want to do some deep cleaning. So maybe I might need to have, um, the window cleaner and some paper towels if I want to clean the windows in my room, right? Or maybe I need a hamper to put all my dirty clothes into. So, I could write those things down. So maybe we'll say, I was gonna say window cleaner, but let's just say Windex and paper towels. Cause I wanna clean the windows in my room. I need a hamper to put my dirty clothes in. I need, I don't know, clean sheets maybe to put on my bed. So things that you need to have or that you do have. And then what are you gonna do? I'm gonna, Clean the windows. Um, clean the clutter on my dresser. So see if you can list at least three things to do and see if you can list at least two things to have while you're doing it. So remember, you're writing your own thing. So you can't copy any of the things that I wrote. You have to do your own, okay? Maybe your room doesn't even have windows, so you don't need Windex and paper towels, right? All right, so this is the last thing that we're going to do for today. If you look at the next page in your packet, it should say Tuesday. 
Oh my gosh. Okay. Drop my phone. Sorry, I had to grab the rest of the packet. So um, it should say Tuesday at the top of the next page. And it's how the camel got his hump. So that's what we're going to be working on tomorrow. Remember, this packet is also labeled week four um, because this one has five days worth of work. So we switched out week four and week five. The week before spring break, we did week five. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day. Um, I will see you tomorrow.